Hello, I'm Ron Clark. So, step three. Okay, so you've completed step one and step two, and it's been about three months, perhaps four, if you need a little extra time on step two. Uh, and step two, by, by now, your habits of uh, the morning uh, uh, preparation and then exercises, hermetic exercises and evening exercises, and you do what you do throughout the day, all of this has become very firm habit. Yeah. In these two months of step two, you've done everything 122 times, at least. <laughs> So you've got these habits that uh, are just second nature by now. And see, it was that easy. It just takes time, you know, to set those things in concrete. That's all, time. It may be a struggle at first, but after a while it becomes very easy and very natural, and your day is not the same without it. So, step two, you got all the sensory concentration exercises, which were very important. Um, using the senses and learning to isolate and exercise the senses. This is very good stuff. Uh, and you'll continue it in step three. Uh, it'll just become a little more complex. But you'll still be using that same uh, creative uh, imagination muscle um, throughout. Um, you've also um, been using auto suggestion for a couple of months now, and this is a good habit for life, really, um, especially when it comes to self transformation. It's really essential. Um, then you've uh, learned to pour breathe the vital energy through your body, in and out, and in and out. And your body has become not looser, um, more flexible. Um, yeah, it's hard to describe what it has done to your body, but it has made changes in your body. And in step three, you're going to be accumulating the vital energy which is quite different and uh, this will stretch your body even more and you'll become more resilient, more elastic. Um, and of course you have been working assiduously at self-transformation and I hope by the end of step two you have uh, if not completely dealt with the one item you chose You've made great progress in it. You're catching yourself when it arises. You're always there on top of it. It might not be fully transformed yet, but you're well on your way. And that is what is necessary with step two, to be well on your way to character transformation. Because in step three, it's gonna be even more intense. Because in step three, you really need to make great progress in the character transformation. Um, by the time you reach step four and start working with the elements in the step four way, you need to have a pretty decent uh, elemental equilibrium, we'll call it, which I'll talk about more later. But you need to have some balance to your character um, by the end of step three. It's really very essential. So step three, you might need to take a little longer than the three months I've scheduled for it. My schedule is sort of a quick working of step three. Uh, it may take you longer. And specifically around the element, um, the, the elemental exercises, which begin in step three, and the, um, the uh, character transformation. Okay, so on to step three. Now, you of course maintain 
your morning habits and your daily habits throughout the day. You get up each morning and as you're waking you have your affirmation going in your head. Okay? And then you do the, the dry brushing, the cold bathing, uh, the rough dry and a little bit of exercise, physical exercise before you sit down to your hermetic exercises each morning and then each evening you're doing your exercises every day you're maintaining your self-awareness throughout the day so you can continuously work at refining your character that is really major importance in step three is the continuation of the character transformation this really needs to be your main focus it's your focus throughout the day okay every day throughout the day you're working at character transformation it's very exciting because I mean, you're having all these successes all these little successes that add up and really significantly uh, create change in your character now step three uh, Barden begins with a little one-page essay on the four fundamental qualities. Um, these later appear in initiation as the divine attributes. A slight uh, altering, they become the divine attributes. Um, so, he, he writes this little essay because it's important that you start um, engendering these four qualities in yourself because they are essential qualities for the pursuit of hermetics. Um, they've been essential all along but now we're beginning to address them straight on. Okay? And they are as follows. Number one, knowledge. This means that you need to be intellectually inquisitive. You need to spend that time in contemplation on, well, the four qualities, uh, the theory section of Hermetics. You need to be hungry for knowledge. Uh, a Hermeticist is a scientist, really. We scientifically go about recreating ourselves. Okay, so we need a certain knowledge to back up what we are doing. And we are always learning. A hermeticist must always learn from everything. Okay? So, intellectual inquisitiveness, knowledge, gaining knowledge. Number two is volition or willpower. I mean, obviously, you must develop a very strong willpower. You've exercised it already in developing these habits in forcing yourself to get up in the morning and do all these exercises and do them again at night. And the, the willpower of constantly being self-aware, that takes a lot of willpower too. The willpower that's involved in self-transformation, this is, you need a strong willpower, a volition. So, you know, meditate on what is willpower? Where does it come from? How does it arise? Learn, you know, knowledge about willpower is one thing. Uh, number three is daring or boldness. You have to be bold. You know, you have to be willing to risk everything to achieve your goal. You have to uh, be willing to stand on the edge of the precipice and look over to see what what is there in the world. You've got to have that sense of adventure and daring and boldness. And last is silence, or more importantly, privacy. I said this before, you need to protect what you are developing, this, this nascent um, ritual of each day. You need to protect that, because it's new and it's fragile. Uh, it will be fragile for a while to come. Um, so you need to protect it. Keep it in a cloak of silence. Don't share what you're doing with everybody. 
You know, there may be people in your life, significant people, that you need or, or want to share um, this exciting thing in your life. But still, be careful. Don't share the really, really intimate inner details that you need to keep to yourself. You'll know. You'll know when it's appropriate to share and when it's not. But keep that in mind. A certain reticence in public about who you are becoming. Certainly express yourself, but don't give away all the details. Yeah. Okay? So, those four fundamental qualities you need to uh, spend some of your contemplation time on um, discovering what they mean to you, how they fit into your life. Okay? So, the exercises of step three, the mental exercises, we're working again on the uh, creative imagination in much the same vein as step two. In step two, we isolated each sense and focused on just that sense to develop it and to use it creatively. Okay? So, in step three, we shift to multi-sensory. So we're, we're adding more than one sense at a time. At first, it's a plain multi-sense imagination. Um, so, like, the, the sound of the bell ringing, you add in the image of the hand ringing the bell. So it's two senses, sound and sight. Um, you might envision an orange, and then you have the smell of the orange along with it. You might peel the orange, okay? So it's a simple addition of senses to uh, the single sense imagination. And then you take this and visual only a scene or a tableau. Um, so you're imagining, you're outdoors, walking down the street, and you see several people, you know, cars, uh, buildings, so it's... Uh, you're having a, a multi, a visual, uh, moving, uh, lots of different objects, not just one red ball. It's a dozen red balls all bouncing around, that kind of thing. Um, and we do these with the eyes closed and then the eyes open. There's just a slight difference in in the type of will uh, it takes in the creative imagination to do it with the eyes closed and with the eyes open. With the eyes open, there's lots of other distractions to the senses that you kind of have to override in order to maintain your, uh, your creative imagination. And so we have the single sense, the visual only tableau or scene, then we go to a multi-sense tableau or scene. So you're outside, you hear all the noises, you smell all the smells, etc. It's a multi-sense tableau or scene. And again, with the eyes closed, and then the eyes open. Then, you do multi-sense scenes from around the world. You might look um, on Google uh, what it's like in Siberia and you know you create a scene of Siberia you know you you find out what it's like in India and then you create a scene from India so it takes you stretching your imagination to the unfamiliar so till now it's just been all very familiar stuff so you're being even more creative in imagining a scene that is foreign to you. And then you do this multi-sensorial creative imagination with various animals. Okay? So you have a group of monkeys traveling through the forest or a pod of elephants traveling across Asia, you know? Just let your imagination fly. But the 
the the point here is you're using animals. This is an animate, intelligent life form that you are imagining, which is different than a bunch of cars or red balls or anything like that. And then finally you do the same thing with a variety of human beings. F human beings that are familiar to you, human beings that you create in your own imagination, different places around the world. You're focusing on human beings, which is, again, different. Um, yeah, with the human being, uh, we relate even more closely to what we are imagining. And that is important. That prepares you for the step four work of the transference of consciousness. Okay? So, those are the mental exercises. Again, creative imagination and these different ways of using the creative imagination. Each a little more involved than the one before. So we're expanding the creative imagination in step three. And the astral exercises, the first of the element exercises. We're working with the four elements, fire, air, water, and earth. Uh, hopefully you studied the, the theory section enough to have some grasp of what they mean, you know, and working with the character, some grasp of what they mean. Uh, your grasp is not going to be entirely accurate at this point, not until you begin working with the elements themselves. So, the first task of the elements is to inhale the element and exhale the elements. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to inhale the elements and exhale and We're going to go through the elements one at a time. Now, I've scheduled three weeks per element. Uh, that might be enough, might not be enough. You'll have to decide as you do it. Uh, in step three especially, uh, there's more latitude with the timing. I've made it a 12-week uh, progression through the step, which is very much doable, um, but it just depends on you, you know? What can you accomplish in the time allotted? Um, yeah. So, it's inhaling the element, and here you're going to need to use your creative imagination, which should be no problem at all, for you to create the sensations, the colors, sounds, uh, flavors if you want, you know, all these things that correspond to each different element, you have to create it first. And again, it's that basic formula of Hermetics. You apply the creative imagination to this thing that you wish to connect with, the element, and you use your creative imagination, and eventually, doing this enough, and it shouldn't take very long, you will find that you don't need to imagine, and you actually have made contact with the element, and you're inhaling the element, and exhaling the element. You're inhaling it, and exhaling it. Just like we did with the vital energy in the previous lesson. Okay? We start with the inhalation and exhalation. This acclimates our bodies to the element, our astral body specifically. And this will have an effect on your character transformation work. Because that, again, is dealing with the astral elements. So, okay? This, you know, if you're working on a fire element and uh, your uh, major uh, character trait you're transforming is of the fire element, this may have some significant, noticeable uh, influence on how your transformation goes. Most likely what it will do is it will make the transformation easier. It may I instead, or, well... What it may also do is exacerbate the negative trait. It makes it more powerful in a way. But this is a good thing in the character transformation. It gives you something to really hold on to. Um, yeah. 
So it's going to assist your character transformation no matter which way it does it. <laughs> okay? Um, now, the physical exercises, in previous step, we inhaled and exhaled the vital energy. Inhale and exhale. Now, we're going to inhale and exhale the vital energy through each of the various parts of our body. This connects us with the different parts of the body. You know, this is very important. As a, a healer, the hermetic has to know uh, what, the bar what parts there are uh, to the body. They have to know a basic physiology of the human body. And the best way to do that, to really understand and really connect with it, is your own body. Um, plus, here we are getting to feel, uh, to understand in a really visceral way what it feels like to have the vital energy in the different parts of our body. So that when we go to heal someone and use the vital energy in a part of their body, we know what we're doing because we've done it for, to our own body already, okay? So, we inhale and exhale through each of the parts of the body. Um, then, we begin to accumulate the vital energy. Now, accumulate means that we inhale the vital energy and we hold on to it. We inhale some more and hold on to those two. Inhale again, hold on to those three and four and five and six, etc. Till we build up the vital energy within our whole body at this point. And we accumulate a, very, a more and more dense accumulation of the vital energy as we go through the exercise. So we start with, say, seven inhalations of the vital energy. Feel what that is like in our body, and then we release it with the breath again, okay? And we do that, we increase each day the number of inhalations we take in and hold on to, accumulate, and release. We do that until we're up to, say, 30 inhalations of the vital energy and this should feel very dynamic like we're bursting with the vital energy and that's the point because we want to acclimate our bodies to take a large hold on to a large charge of the vital energy and we will then use it or we are using it for our own health um, so we do that with the whole body and then at the end, we do that with all the parts in the body that we inhaled in and out of. We accumulate then a charge of the vital energy and release it in the same way. So that's step three. Accumulation of the vital energy, breathing of the elements, and the multi-sense creative imaginations. Okay? And of course, the four qualities and all of our usual meditations. So, I've, like I said, I've set this up for 12 weeks, three months, um, straight through work. Okay, now let's go through the daily routine. I'm not going to go through the daily morning routine and the daily things you're already doing. It's, so much a habit from step two that you just carry on in step three. Um, again, these are going to be lifelong habits, basically. Okay, so week one. We uh, start with our thought control, a little de a de observation, detachment from the brain, checking in, uh, a contemplation. Um, I suggest at this point in the contemplation, you devote it to the four qualities. Start contemplating the four qualities, what they mean to you, etc. So for the first couple of weeks, devote it to the four qualities.
Um, then a vacancy of mind, a period of vacancy. This is very important. A period of vacancy. So this first week we're going to do the multi-sense imagination, the bell and the hand ringing the bell, the ball and the hand uh, tossing the ball, okay? That kind of multi-sense imagination, the orange and the smell of the orange. And do that with the eyes closed this week. And the fire element, the creative imagination of all the qualities of the fire element, um, and, you know, warmth, uh, nerve, uh, nervous energy, um, etc. You'll have to investigate the fire element and learn its qualities and create them for yourself as you're breathing them in. This is inhaling and then exhaling the element at each time. Inhale and exhale. There's no accumulation here. This is just taking it through your body and coming to recognize the element itself. To start with your creative imagination and eventually let go of your creative imagination once you've made contact with the element itself. And you'll know when you make that contact, okay? You will recognize Oh my God, there's the fire element, <laughs> okay? So we start with the fire element, and it's not critical that you stick with Barden sequence here. It's advisable uh, because a sequence of elements has a significance that you really need to learn, okay? But if you're not a fire element person, if you're a water element person, it's going to be much easier for you to make this contact with the water element. So that is really more important than the sequence of the elements at this stage. When it comes to accumulating the elements, you definitely want to stick to the sequence of the elements, but that's step four. Okay, so for this step, you have choice. Either go with the element sequence, which is advisable, or pick the, se the element that you're most compatible with to start out in this contact the element. Because you want to know what that feels like. Uh, the first time that happens for you uh, makes the second element that much easier because you know what you're looking for, okay? So... Fire element in and out with the eyes closed. And then a poor breathing, uh, the vital energy into all the body parts with the eyes closed. And that's just in and out, each of the different body parts. Just start with your feet, move to your hands, and then around the rest of your body. So first week is with eyes closed. Second week, we're doing the same thing. But the multi-sense imagination, you're doing with your eyes open, okay? This is very simple, uh, and since you have already done the exercises of step two with the sensory imagination. Combining them is actually easier than isolating them, okay? Uh, and then fire element, inhaling them for the whole body. Eyes closed for the first half of the week, and then eyes open for the second half of the week. And same with uh, uh, poor breathing, the vital energy into parts of the body. Eyes closed for first half, eyes open for the second half. Now, week three is sort of a culmination here. Uh, the visual exercise, the uh, sensory imagination exercises, you're going to go for the visual uh, only tableau or scene. The bouncing of several balls. The outdoor scene, but you're seeing just visually, you're not having sound or smell or taste. These things aren't entering in. It's just purely visual imagination, but it's an active scene. Okay? You're doing that with your eyes closed. Fire element inhalation, whole body, you're doing it with your eyes open this whole week, okay? 
and same with the poor breathing into the various body parts. You're doing that with your eyes open. Remember, this is just breathing. This is not accumulation yet. Just breathing in and out. Okay. Now, week four, you're doing the visual uh, imagination to blow or scene with your eyes open. Okay, same thing. Just visual, but with the eyes open, an active scene. And now we're shifting to from the fire element to the air element. You're breathing the air element in and out. You're creating it with your uh, creative imagination and eventually reaching the fire element itself and experiencing that for itself. And you're starting with the eyes closed. Okay. And now we're going to accumulate the vital energy in the whole body. And that's inhale with the whole body and then exhale the whole accumulation at the end. Okay, with the breathing in and out, we're inhaling and exhaling at the same time. But here we're inhaling several breaths, start with seven inhalations of the vital energy into your whole body and sit with it. Feel it. Feel what it feels like. You know, experience what it feels like to sit there with this accumulation of vital energy in your whole body. Look very closely at what it feels like. And then you rid your body of the vital energy. Now you can do that with seven exhalations or you can release it all at once. What you must not get into is worrying that I haven't released all the vital energy from my body. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a trap, okay? You must build your confidence and your volition, your willpower, so that you release all of the vital energy. That's all there is to it. It's all gone. You're not there wondering if you've got some left and you know what it's going to do to you. Number one, it's not going to do any damage to you. But number two, it's up to you to release it all. It, there's the only reason it will feel like you haven't released it all is because of your thinking. Uh, you've convinced yourself. You're afraid. You need to be daring, remember? And bold. And just let it out. Let it all out. That's all there is. And be done with it. Okay? And it's up to you. It's not up to anything else but you. Okay? So, you accumulate seven breaths. And you release seven breaths. And you're going to do this with your eyes closed. Ah, huh. oh, yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> what week are we on? <laughs> okay, you're going to do that with your eyes closed at first. You accumulate and you add another breath, another inhalation, accumulation of the vital energy each day. So day two, you're going to do eight inhalations. Day three, nine, etc. You build it up one breath a day as that feels comfortable. Eventually you'll get so comfortable with it that you'll be able to go several breaths a day increase. But you'd want to increase to about 30. 30 is a good number for this exercise in terms of an accumulation. Now, eventually, as you're doing 30, it will be easier and easier. And you will do the equivalent, uh, what was in the beginning, 30 accumulations, you'll be able to do in a single breath. So, as you get to 30, you know, each breath will be a larger inhalation, shall we say. You will accumulate it more rapidly, uh, to the point, well, just to the point where you feel comfortable. You don't want to make yourself uncomfortable with the vital energy. You want to be comfortable 
with your accumulation, but always stretch your limits a little bit. Comfortably stretch your limits with it. Okay, now, week five, we are doing the multi-sense tableau, or scene, and so we're going multi-sense now, not just the visual. So, that is uh, outdoors, all the car, you hear the noise of all the cars, and the smells, etc. So, a familiar scenes, but multi-sensory. And you're doing this with the eyes closed. And we're inhaling and exhaling the air element is still. Do it first half of the week with the eyes closed, second half of the week with the eyes open. In and out with the air element. And, you know, you'll be connecting with the air element about now. And that would be really cool. And we're accumulating the um, vital energy again in the whole body. You know, we started with seven. We're up to 12, 13 inhalations a day now. Um, and we're doing this first half of the week with our eyes closed, second half of the week with our eyes open. So it's a progression, eyes closed and then eyes open. And week six, we're doing the multi-sense scene or tableau, visualization, um, audioization, uh, etc. Uh, with the eyes open, okay? So it supersedes what we're seeing uh, normally with our eyes. And we're inhaling the air element, inhaling and exhaling with the eyes open, exclusively with the eyes open. Okay, and we're accumulating the violet energy into the whole body with the eyes open. Okay, so that's Week six, we're halfway through already. Now, week seven, we go to, we're shifting the creative imagination exercises to uh, a multi-sensory scenes from around the world. We're going to foreign lands, so to speak. Uh, Imagining other places, uh, the Taj Mahal, for example, if you've never been there, this is a good thing to imagine, the Grand Canyon, you know, really stretch your imagination, look things up on, on Google, you know, whatever, uh, look in some travel brochures or, or picture books for different lands different cultures, take a look at them and imagine them. And you connect with these different places, the difference of these places in a very interesting way through this exercise. Okay, and that's with the eyes closed. Now we've shifted to the water element. So we're inhaling and exhaling throughout our whole body, the water element you know, creating the sensory impressions of the water element at first until we reach the water element itself and then we are inhaling and exhaling the true water element. And we start with our eyes closed. Okay, and with, again, we are uh, accumulating the vital energy into our whole body with our eyes open, okay? So, uh, the reason we do it with our eyes open is because we need to do this anywhere, under any circumstances, ultimately. So we want to be able to accumulate the, the vital energy or breathe an element uh, walking down the street, you know, entering a room uh, we have to be able to do it under any circumstances with our eyes open or if we can our eyes closed But we have to learn how 
Okay, week eight. Uh, we're doing multi-sense scenes from around the world, still, but with the eyes open. Okay, and the water element. We are inhaling and exhaling it. First week, first half of the week with the eyes closed, second half with the eyes open. And we're accumulating the vital energy into all of our body parts. Now, this is not the whole body, which we've been doing up till now. We're accumulating it in the various parts, just like we breathe, breathe it in and out from the various parts of our body. Now we're accumulating it again. Seven breaths to start out with, because we haven't done this before in our body parts. We need to be careful and gentle and really get to know what the vital energy feels like in each of our bodily parts. We get to know where our kidneys are, where the liver is. You know, what does it feel like to have the vital energy in our liver or our stomach, our spleen? We get, need to know two things here. One, where our bodily parts are and what they feel like. And two, what it feels like to project or to accumulate vital energy in one of these bodily parts. We have to know when we're going too far, when we can go farther, etc. So, we find that out in our own bodies. And it's very healing. It's a very tonifying practice, okay? For our own health. Okay, so we're doing that with our eyes closed. Now, week nine, we're doing uh, multi-sense uh, imaginations of various animals this time, with the eyes closed. Every animal imaginable, we want to um, have this uh, imaginary relationship with them multi-sense imagination. So, multi-sense. We're hearing them. We're smelling them. Okay? And we're uh, inhaling and exhaling the water element through our whole body with our eyes open. And we're accumulating the vital energy into various parts of our body with our eyes closed for the first half of the week, eyes open for the second half of the week, okay? Now, week 10, We're getting close. The multi-sense uh, imagination of the animals we're doing with our eyes open. So anytime you're walking around, you can have a little cat friend walking with you, meowing at you, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Uh, we have shifted now to the earth element imagination and the earth element breathing in and out, developing the uh, you know sensory impressions of the earth element with our creative imagination, and then eventually it's leading us to the earth element itself, and we're breathing it in and out, in and out, the whole body. And we're starting with the eyes closed. Uh, we are again accumulating the vital energy into our various body parts. And we're doing that with the eyes open. Okay. Now, week 11. The uh, multi sense exercises are now with human beings. So, just start imagining human beings. Really notice the features of this human being that you're imagining and change it up. Keep changing up the human being so you get used to imagining all kinds of human beings. And this is with the eyes closed. And the earth element Inhalation, exhalation, first half of the week, eyes closed, second half of the week, eyes open. 
and then accumulation of the vital energy into the body parts we are working with the eyes open so eyes open into any and all of your body parts just go through the body it doesn't you know doesn't have to um, be a long session with each body part necessarily uh, but you know it can be just a couple of minutes with this part a couple of minutes with that part a couple of minutes with that part but you want to work yourself through your whole body not necessarily in one sitting but uh, over the course of a week you want to have touched upon every part of your body okay now week 12 the final week uh, multi-sense imagination of human beings with the eyes open the only difference and the earth element inhalation and exhalation with the eyes open and this will complete our work with the elements and now the vital energy instead of uh, inhaling and exhaling uh, through your bodily parts or through your whole body this week what I want you to do is read at the end of step three there is a whole appendix on uses of the vital energy mostly for healing um, and I want you to read that and pick out things in there that you can do and spend this week actually accumulating the vital energy and using it you know use find opportunities to use the vital energy so in this time of your exercises um, think about how you will use the vital energy during the week and take this time to plan them to uh, go through it in your mind that you will enter the room you will fill the room with vital energy for this specific desire and run it through in your mind entering the room and accumulating the vital energy and exercising it and then throughout the week go and do those things and you want to start well not really building this habit but learning how to do these things so that any time it's appropriate or needed you can do it okay so make use of these abilities that you have learned and during your exercise period you may want to practice your accumulation so that is all of the exercises in step three as I said set out for three months now in step three you want to take as much time with step three as you need to make these advances specifically in your character transformation you want to have really a, a sense of more equilibrium than you had before um, you won't be experiencing these great highs and lows these extremes of character that you were before you want to have that under your control you want to be always self-aware by this point of who you are and how you are in the world and always um, adjusting that, modifying that, improving that. That needs to be a habit by the end of step three. Needs to be a habit. Um, you also need to have connected even at a rudimentary level connected with all four of the elements so don't go on to step four until these two things are well established character transformation and the work with the elements these are the most important things in step three and most necessary
to progress into step four, because in step four, um, you will be pretty much letting go of the character transformation um, as part of your daily exercises. It won't be the focus of your daily exercises. It will take sort of a secondary role. It will always be with you as something you have to pay attention to and always have to be working at throughout your day. But during your exercise period, it won't be as much of a focus as it was in step three. What you take off with in step four is to work with the elements specifically and the transference of awareness or consciousness. So, I leave you there with step three. Bye-bye. Good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs>